Hello and welcome everybody to another Realm Royale patch shots. My name is Pretty Hair, of course, joined by the rest of the gang, of course, Alex, our design representative, Andy, our programming representative, and young Jay Nash, the man himself. <laughs> sort of stuff, guys. We're going to go ahead and move on to the balance, me and this man right here. We're going to buffer nerf some of your favorite, or maybe least favorite weapons and abilities. First one on the list, the proximity trap. Yeah, so this one's simple. It was at a two second activation time. So you'd sit there, you'd throw it out, take two seconds to actually pop out of its little thing and then blow yeah. up. So I reduced that down to 1.2 seconds. It felt a little more viable. It felt like you could actually put it somewhere and have the intended consequence. It blows up and damages someone. In an action sequence, really. Yes. You know, there's not a whole lot. Well, maybe for some people, but for me, I'm not really a sit and wait in my proximity yeah. trap kind of player. <laughs> I think you could use that as, you could see it as more of a skill yes. shot if it activates quickly, right? You just land it, you know, lead it a little bit and bada right. bing, bada boom. Plus this thing hits. This thing yeah. swings hard, especially if you get one of those upper rarity ones. I didn't change damage yet because it's... <laughs> well, it's let's see. Yeah, well, let's Where see. we land. Exactly. I'm not saying it's going to go one way or the other. It is powerful. But the Shredder, that's next up on the docket. The Shredder no longer deals headshot damage, but... Big butt. Time between bullets in a burst has been reduced yeah. as a result. Stick with me here. No headshots. So Follow me. Yeah, this is one of those things where, especially with the fire element, we were noticing that you could... We even did some internal testing, and we were doing something like six or 7,000 damage oh. with full clip. You're oh. wrecking. You're wrecking with that fire damage. We like those. And that scaling headshot. <laughs> so I didn't touch the damage numbers, but reducing the amount or headshots at all on this, it just felt more in line with the weapon. I want to get in there and spray and just hit you in the body, get that big target, chew you up. But what I did was increase that, or decrease actually, so when you're firing off your bullets, it's not going to be as slow as it was. I just... Touch that up a little bit so you're popping off bullets a little faster. Cool. Very cool stuff. So no more headshots for the Shredder, but they're going to shoot faster and less right. delay in between. Armor potions. I'm excited for this one. Increase the drop rate for armor potions from potion chests. All players will drop at least one armor potion when they are eliminated, even if they had none in their inventory. Right. Yeah, this was big. So the first part is just this a is general... Huge. We looked at those armor chests, the ones that you see, you know, they're the more boxy formation, right? Yep. So I'm like, all right, let's increase the armor potion. So they, we jumped those up a little bit. You have a much better chance of getting at least one armor potion out of those now. The bigger one here, all players, yeah, they're dropping one, like you said. So you kill someone, you just got into a match, they're dropping an armor potion. I'm real excited to see what this does at the end game. You're in these fights, you're just going through all your armor potions and maybe there's three or four people in that final circle yeah you get the kill i can at least get one armor potion because before it would feel almost like you were punished a little bit for fighting right i'm having to expend my armor to say a lot or you could just take no shots am i am i right boys am I right? <laughs> just move better kid move better uh no but less punishing i think to be able to pop at least one of these for your troubles of of getting one of those kills very very good change love that yeah. lifesteal rune that's the next one up on the docket the lifesteal bonus has been whoosh, from 30% to 15. Yeah, we took the big uh, we took the big 50% axe and hit it with that one because that was just, it was a common complaint that we saw all the time. That lifesteal rune was too powerful, especially with high-skilled players. They were sitting there and they could just reheal in a battle constantly. Uh, so I just took it in half. These are the types of changes that we look at, and I want to see how players engage with it. You know, we have so much testing that we can do internally, and I really want to see what people do out in the wild. Yeah. So I go a little heavy, and then we see. And I think 15% makes sense but 15% is still a lot i mean yeah, cuz it cuz it's at the day it's it's 15% that you don't have it's it's a rune right yeah. so you're just having to hopefully stumble upon it this is not something you can really kind of target craft down you right. can't you know preload it with any loadout talents or anything like that so it's it's tough to fight against something like that that's completely random so i, I get it i get the sentiment yeah. for sure 15% was 30 too much feels like yeah it feels like a good a good spot <laughs> uh, <laughs> bug fixes guys let's move into that section everyone loves this part i love this part and our main man andy did a really good job last time so we're gonna ask him to do it again of kind of like you know break these down in layman's terms right so we can all kind of understand what really was the problem because the more you kind of understand a problem the more you could think about a problem in the future and, and maybe sort of help andy figure out the solution at the end of the day so first one up on the docket andy Further improvements to issues where shadows were being visible through walls. Yeah, so this is something I mentioned last time in the uh, patch note show that I was going to make further improvements. So basically, it's a man just of his word. additional checks to make sure that there's scenarios where if you can't see a character, go ahead and just hide the shadow. 
uh, just to make sure there's no more edge cases where it's going to show up through the terrain. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's pretty straightforward. There it is. Fixed yeah. an issue where players would not produce footsteps. I'm sure that was very frustrating if you ever had that happen to you. Yeah, no, that's definitely not good. Uh, from what I remember on that, it was another programmer that actually fixed that one. But from what I remember, I think it had to do with um, essentially the way that your physics state and your animation state was replicating across the network. Essentially, remote clients could get into a weird state yeah. where they were in a animation state that wasn't triggering footsteps because they weren't technically walking right. animations, if I remember right. Gotcha. Yeah, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Next issue fixed. Solgus not going through catapults. Yeah. And that's another one I didn't personally take care of, but just that sort of thing is usually just kind of a setting of what sort of things this projectile can collide with and it just happened to and be the catapults are like that. a different category than yeah. boxes or so, yeah, you know, stuff like that we just that adjusted one, it was that Ooh. All right. Ooh, easy <laughs> cool easy for alex yeah. d boys we, we take those <laughs> we take those every day <laughs> uh next one on the list address some of the issues of uneven terrain on the cliffs above fungal jungle I, was I used well? I guess that might have been me as well. Yeah, so that was more... <laughs> little landscaping? Yeah, a little landscaping. <laughs> getting in there, you know, doing a little world building. Yeah, it's that same idea. After we make some adjustments to an area, um, and some of these were a little older, and I found that players are getting stuck on some of the collision in those mountain areas when you're overlooking fungal jungle. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of when you want to jump on top of those big old mushrooms. So mm -hmm. there were some places where you get stuck, so I just tried to find the ones that were egregious and smooth them out. Cool. Very, very cool. Fix an issue where proximity trap would float in the air if it hit an enemy player. Yeah, and that was another thing that I actually got from watching the streams is that they were complaining about it was just kind of weird when you hit someone with the proximity trap. It would just kind of hang out and then deploy. Mm. So I worked with Alex, and we decided just to make it explode if it hit someone because it really didn't make any sense there it is, for boys. it to just <laughs> sit there. I love it. Right? I love it. Yeah. I mean, you, you hit the you hit the skill shot, boy. You yeah. better reward him for yeah. it. Next up, fix an issue that would cause Firebomb to persist for too long without exploding. So this was a... Um, it was a probably a much deeper problem. It had to do with the way that our projectile starts on the client and then goes to the server. It was essentially just like a miscommunication between the client and server saying that it was supposed to bounce here, where the server was mm. like, yeah, it bounced, and the client's like, no, it exploded. So it was just kind of fixing that desync. Gotcha. Um, show up often as it, the firebomb would just rotate yep. in place and you not know, do anything. That happens yeah. to Tyra every once yeah, in a while. Yeah, I've seen that. I, I thought, was, yeah. I always I thought it was. was did you really? I always thought it was like it was getting stuck in like, because some of the map hitboxes on Paladins are like nutty precise yeah. in terms of like they will go through two little floorboards if you're yeah. not yep. careful. I always thought it was like something of just like it's getting caught in limbo. But, but yeah, bouncing dang, projectiles are tricky. That dang client <laughs> server, you know, they're always just arguing. Yeah. Why can't they just agree on anything? Exactly. That would make all of our lives so much easier. Uh, we have fog damage will no longer bypass armor while in an immunity effect. Yeah. Uh, so, again, I don't remember all the details of this one. This is another programmer to fix this. But from what I remember talking to him, it, it essentially just had to do with, I think it was just like some legacy code that existed that if you were in like ice immune block or state, ghost block. it wouldn't yeah. apply to the, um, the like, different health pools. Gotcha. It would just apply to the main one based on like how true damage was working because the fog was considered true damage. Right. Um, so we just had to adjust some of that code and it was pretty straightforward once we found exactly where it was going wrong. So now, I mean, you know, Ghost Walk's more useful out yeah. there uh, yeah. out there in the wild fog if you're a, a fog kind of guy. Wild man, yeah. <laughs> if you love living your life out there, I guess, <laughs> you know, do you, baby. I'm not going to stop you. Fix an issue where spectated players' runes would show runes that the player did not actually have. Yeah, uh, that one was on me because I made it so you could actually spectate runes, but I, essentially the code that was already there, it never actually cleared out the icons. <laughs> so if you had one dude with two runes and one dude with four runes you were spectating, as soon as you went to the guy that had four and then back to the dude with two, it would still show those extra two. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, and again, pretty straightforward to fix once we figured out that it was happening. So. Awesome. Fix an issue where the skydiving sound effect would get stuck on a resurrected player. Yep. I think this one was more of a kind of a legacy thing because I think at one point in the past, we must have had it where when you'd revive, you would actually skydive back in. So gotcha. it was essentially that you would immediately go into the skydive and then yeah. out of the skydive. There was and that the remote for a while. Yeah. Um, so I just basically got rid of that legacy code. Ah, so. Awesome. Very, very cool cleanup yeah. there. Fixed a variety of issues surrounding vaulting. Yeah, so this one obviously was a really big frustration for the community. Like, I even felt it myself when I would play and watching streamers. You would go up to the 
window and try to vault through it and do either weird things where it'd be like, you didn't go through it, but you looked like you did and you teleported mm. back or the opposite. So basically I had to rewrite some of how that code was set up to actually be more consistent and kind of like the handoff between client and server being more reliable. You let me know if I need to have a chat with Mr. Client and Mr. Server. <laughs> we'll get down to business. Last issue here on the docket, fix an issue where the loot goblin would not drop loot when eliminated. Note that a known issue if the loot goblin dies mid air. That one's actually fixed. I fixed the okay. animation issues too. Sorry, so Easy for Andy. Yeah. At the end of the day, yeah. easy for easy. Andy. So yeah, basically <laughs> I just looked at how the state was being handled and I kind of adjusted some things and made sure it was handling it more consistently as well as work with the animation team to make sure that the animation actually gets transitioned right. into. Because at one point when he was in midair, if he died, the way his animation tree was set up, it just wouldn't let you transition to the death animation. So we just shuffled some things around and got that working. Terrific. That does it yeah. for our, uh, our bug fix section. <laughs>